Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. I've been doing a short video series covering all the different ways you could sharpen an image in Photoshop. In our last video, I talked about how to use the unsharp mask. In this video, we're going to talk about Smart Sharpen. I mentioned at the top that I already did a video on the unsharp mask. If you haven't seen that, I'll have a link to that in the description below this video. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, a little flag will pop up over here on the top right hand side that will link you directly to that video. In that video, I mentioned that Photoshop is destructive and you should take precautions to make sure that you're not going to be doing any editing directly on the original layer and ultimately on your image that you can't undo. In that video, I took the original background layer and I duplicated it by hitting Command J on my Mac. If you have a PC, you'd hit Control J. And I did all my sharpening on that duplicate layer. That way, if I didn't like what I did to it, I could just toss that layer away and I'd be right back where I started. I received an email from someone telling me that they're doing that. Uh, they're duplicating the layer, but they're doing sharpening and the sharpening isn't doing anything. And they sent me a screenshot and what they had is they had a bunch of adjustment layers on top of the original background layer. When you're sharpening, you have to sharpen a pixel layer. That means you have to sharpen the background layer or a layer that actually contains pixels. You can't sharpen the adjustment layer. It just won't show any sharpening at all. And if you are in Photoshop and you added a bunch of adjustment layers and other layers, you want to apply sharpening basically to the image. What you're going to have to do is one of two things. You're going to have to flatten all those layers. To do that, you would go up to Layer and down to Flatten Image. Or you'll have to merge all these layers together and create a stamp layer and put that stamp layer on top of the Layers panel. Now, to do that involves a complicated keyboard shortcut. Uh, it's kind of it's called Twister for Fingers. If you have a PC, what you would do is hit Shift, Alt, Control, E. If you have a Mac, it's Shift, Option, Command, E. And when you do that, it will merge these two layers together and put that layer at the top of the layer panel. Now, furthermore, I mentioned in our last video that when you do sharpening on a layer, once you click OK to apply the sharpening, you can't go back and readjust it unless you create a smart object. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So I have this stamped layer. For double precautions, I'll duplicate it. I'll hit Command J. If you have a PC, hit Control J. And I'll take this copy layer and I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to smart object. And it will take a second to do that. And when it does that, you'll see a little square appear in the corner of the image. Once it's a smart object. Now, anything I do to it, I actually could go back in and readjust. And I'll demonstrate that to you once we do sharpen it. And we're going to sharpen it right now. We'll go up to Filter, down to Sharpen, and down to Smart Sharpen. And the Smart Sharpen dialog box opens up. And it looks like it's kind of simple. There's only three sliders, but you could do a little more here. But I must confess, it's my least favorite of the sharpening that is in Photoshop. Um, I find it a little touchy, but maybe you'll find it different. Now at the very top, we have that preview checkbox. So we could preview our sharpening in real time on the image if that is checked. If you check it off, it will remove sharpening from the image, but we'll keep sharpening on this little view box that's in here. So you could drag this around to where you'd like it, or you could just click on the image on an area and then this box will reposition theoretically to that area. Although there it is. I did I wasn't patient enough, but that's what you would do. So we could see it here, click that box to see the sharpening in real time. Now, the cool thing about this filter though, it has two features that I do like is you could add a preset. If you find you're always using the same sharpening or often using the same same sharpening, you could save it as a preset and then you could then uh, just apply that sharpening very quickly. Also, it also will sharpen in a specific way to improve lens blur or remove lens blur or Gaussian blur. 
or motion blur. And if you're removing motion blur, you have a little wheel here that you could uh, manipulate this to uh, go in the direction of the motion blur. So if you have motion blur going from the top left-hand corner to lower right, you could move that around to help alleviate that blur properly. Now, in most cases, you're going to want to remove lens blur. Now we have these three sliders and really only two of them have to do with sharpening amount and radius. And there's also a reduced noise slider there. As you know, uh, when you sharpen an image, you tend to sometimes enhance any noise that's already there and you could help remove it with that reduced noise slider. Now the way I go about doing this is I start with amount. Amount is like the volume control um, of your slide, of uh, the control of the filter. So the more you put it up, the more sharpening that's going to be applied. But I kind of put the other two at a start position. I always put radius at one to begin with, and I put reduced noise at 25% uh, to begin with, or thereabouts. Let's see if I could hit it. There we go, 25%. Then what I'll do is I'll start with amount, like somewhere around two thirds of the way up. This will go all the way up to 500 and you'll notice that 500 will be over sharpened once it renders. So what I'll do is I'll uh, put it about one third of the way up, uh, I don't know, 175 to 200 in there somewhere. Then what I'll do is I'll start to tweak radius up to see if I could uh, get the uh, image sharper without making it look over sharpened. So I started at one pixel. I'll then jump it all the way up to like three pixels usually. Now, um, what I found is that the radius slider could be really touchy. Like it will be perfect and then you just move it a tiny bit and all of a sudden it's over sharpened. Uh, for, I mean, if you go way up, you'll see once it renders that it really uh, is you know, horrible, right? So you really got to be careful with that radius slider. So I start at one, I'll jump up to three, let's say, and I'll let it render. And then I'll see what the sharpening looks like. What I often like to do is zoom in on the main image. And I do that by hitting command plus on my Mac keyboard. If you have a PC, you'd hit control plus. I might do it a second time. Then I want to maybe move it down a little bit. I will hold the space bar in. And when you hold the space bar in, the cursor will turn into the hand tool and you could drag down so I could see the image a little better. All right, that actually, that sharpening looks uh, pretty decent, I mean, uh, but then I'll just try, I'll push it. So I'll go up to like four ish and I'll wait for it to render. It takes a long time. My Mac actually is pretty old, so it's taking a little longer than usual. And uh, that looks okay, I guess. Now, at this point, if I'm starting to see noise, I may start to pu push the noise slider to the right, but be aware that that will soften the sharpening. So it does affect sharpening directly. Uh, it's going to make your sharpening look not as sharp. So I try to avoid moving that off 25%. So um, four pixels, decent. Let's go to five, see if we can push it. Okay, and let it render. Sometimes, uh, especially if you're using a smart object on an older computer like I am, uh, you'll find that it takes a really long time to render or it won't render at all. And what I found is that uh, if I turn preview off and turn it back on, then it kind of kicks it in. So um, that looks okay. So um, I would probably be done with the uh, image right here. That one could argue might be slightly over sharpened, but that's okay. What we'll do now though, is I want to explain what's in this little roll down here. If we click on that, you could see that there's um, shadows and highlights. This is where you could remove sharpening from specific parts of the image. And for the demonstration, I'll just, I'll turn radius like way up so we could see it quite over sharpened. Okay. Let it render if it will render. It rendered here. There it is. Okay. So, um, let's say highlights. If I want to remove the sharpening from the highlights, I move fade amount to the right. And you can see as I do that, it removed it here and it's removing the sharpening from the highlights. Similarly for the shadows, if I want to remove the sharpening from the shadows, I move this slider to the right and it removes the sharpening from the shadows. Now the tonal width is when it's right in the middle, 
It's uh, leaving the midtones alone. But if you want to just do more of the midtones, you would move this to the right. So if I move both of these to the right, you should see the sharpening be totally removed from everywhere because I not only removed it from the shadows and the highlights, I moved the tonal width on both of those to the extreme right, which then affected all of the midtones. Now, if I want to just, just do the thinnest part of the shadows and the thinnest part of the highlights, I would move both of those to the left. And also, uh, there's a radius um, filter or slider at the bottom there so that you could then, um, if we're applying sharpening uh, to a broad, we're using, let's say, a radius of 64. And if I want to then uh, take, like up here, if I take this radius and I move it, let's say, the extreme right to 100 and then at 100, it's then removing the sharpening from that radius because it's under 64 or most of the sharpening. So that is another um, way that you could effectively remove sharpening from the image. I find this to be very difficult to use, and this is probably the main reason why I don't like using Smart Sharpen, because I just think this adds uh, some complications uh, to uh, this that aren't necessary. Because you could so see that I did get pretty decent sharpening um, when I was around, like, you know, between four and five pixels uh, using lens blur, lens blur removal. And you can see it, it, it looks pretty good. Now let's just say I like this. So I'm gonna zoom back out by hitting Command Zero that will fit that to the screen. And I'm gonna click OK. So it's going to apply the sharpening to that layer. And remember that layer is a smart object. And because it's a smart object, I'll be able to go back in and readjust stuff. Plus, that smart object will come with its own filter mask, as you can see. Now there's this filter mask and there's Smart Sharpen right there. So if I want to go back in and readjust, I double click where it says Smart Sharpen, and this pops up again. You can see it has my exact settings I just used, and I could, let's say, tone it down a little bit. Click OK, and now, it's there again, it readjusted it. Now I could go and readjust it all I want. Also, because it has that layer mask there, I could click on that mask, get a brush, paint in black, and remove the sharpening from wherever I don't want the sharpening. Like I probably don't need to sharpen that background, I just need to sharpen the bird. So I could click on this mask, get a brush by hitting the B key on my keyboard, make sure I'm painting in black, and get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And then I could come in here and paint. And you could see as I'm painting, the mask itself is getting black painted on it. So I could come in here. I'm not going to do it all right now, but I could remove the sharpening from that area as well. So that is Smart Sharpen. Admittedly, not my favorite sharpening, but many people do use it and they like it and they probably use it more effectively than I do. Hopefully, you're like them and you... Uh, find a very effective way to apply Smart Sharpen to your image. In our next video, I'm going to cover my favorite sharpening in Photoshop, High Pass Sharpening. So look for that very soon. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>